Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Ex Exodus 21 to 25, Proverbs 6, and Psalm 127. Let's get started. Here are the laws you must explain to the people of Israel. Suppose you buy a female Hebrew servant. He must serve you for six years, but in the seventh year you must set him free. He does not have to pay anything. If he does not have a wife when he comes, he must not. He must go free of land. But if he has a wife when he comes, he must go with him. Suppose his master gives him a wife, and suppose she has sons or daughters by him, then only the man will go free. The woman and her children will belong to her master. I suppose the servant said, I love my master and my wife and children. I must take him to the judges. His master must take him to the door or door post of his master's hand. His master must pick a hole through his servant's earlobe into the door doorpost. Then he will become his servant for life. Suppose a man sells his daughter as a servant. Then she can, can't go free as male servants do. But what if the master who has chosen her does not like her? Then he must let the man buy her back. He has no right to sell her to strangers. He has chosen he has broken his promise to her. What if he chooses her to marry a son? Then he will grant her the rights of a daughter. And what if her master marries another woman? She must give the first one her food and clothes and sleep with her. If he does not provide her with those three things, she can go free. She does not have to pay anything. Anyone who hits and kills someone else must be put to death. Suppose they do not do it on purpose. Suppose I let it happen. Then they can escape to a place I'll choose. <clears throat> but suppose they kill someone on purpose. Then take them away from my altar and put them to death. Anyone who attacks their father or mother must be put to death. Anyone who kidnaps and sells another person must be put to death. If they still have the person with them when they are caught, they must be put to death. Anyone who asks for something bad to happen to their father or mother must be put to death. Suppose two people get into a fight and argue with each other. One hits the other with a stone or his fist, and the person who was hit does not die but has to stay in bed. Then, and later that person gets up and walks outside with a walking stick. Then the person who hit the other person will not be held responsible. But the person must pay the one who was hurt for the time spent in bed. The one who hit the other person must be sure that the person is completely healed. Suppose a person be their male or female, or female slave to death with a club. That person must be punished. But they will not be punished if the slave gets up after a day or two. After all, the slave is their property. Suppose some people are fighting and one of them hits a pregnant woman. Suppose she... And suppose she has a baby early, but just is not badly hurt. Then the one who hurts her must pay a fine. That person must pay what the woman's husband asks for, and the court allows. But if someone is badly hurt, a life must be taken for a life. An eye must be taken, put out for an eye. A tooth must be knocked out for a tooth. A hand must be cut off for a hand, and a foot for a foot. A bone must be given for a bone. A wound for a wound and a bruise for a bruise. Suppose an owner hits a male or female slave in the eye and destroys it. Then the owner must let the slave go free to pay for the eye. Suppose an owner knocks out the tooth of a male or female slave. Then he must let the slave go free to pay for the tooth. Suppose a bull kills a man or woman with its horns. Then he must kill the bull by throwing stones at it. Its meat must not be eaten, but the owner of the bull will not be held accountable. But suppose the bull has had the habit of attacking people, and suppose the owner has been warned but has not kept it friends in. Then if it kills a man or woman, you must kill him with stone. The owner must also be put to death. But suppose payment is required of him instead. Then the owner can save his life by paying what is required. The same law applies if the bull wounds son or daughter with his horns. Suppose the bull wounds a male or female slave. Then the owner must pay the slave's master about 12 ounces of silver. He must kill the bull with stone. Suppose someone uncovers a pit of, or digs one and does not cover it. And suppose an ox or donkey falls into it. Then the person who opened the pit must pay for the animal's owner for the loss. The dead animal will belong to the person who opened, to the, opened the pit. Suppose someone bull wounds a neighbor's bull and it dies. Then the owner and the neighbor must sell the life on and they must share the money and the dead animal equally. But suppose people knew that the bull had the habit of attack. And suppose the owner did not keep it fenced in. Then the owner must give another animal to pay for the dead animal. And the dead animal will belong to the owner. 
Suppose someone steals an ox or a sheep, and suppose that person kills it or sells it. Then the thief must pay back five oxen for the ox, or the thief must pay back four sheep for the sheep. Suppose you catch a thief breaking into your house at night, and suppose you hit the thief and the thief dies, then you are not guilty of murder. But suppose it happens after the sun has come up, then you are guilty of murder. Anyone who steals must pay for whatever they steal. But suppose the thief does not have anything, well, then the thief must be sold to pay for what was sold. If the, one of the stolen ox, donkey or sheep is found alive with the thief, then the thief must pay back twice as much. Suppose someone lost their livestock, eat grass in someone else's field or vineyard. They must pay that, then they must pay that person back from the best crops of their own field or vineyard. Suppose a fire breaks out and spreads into bushes. Suppose it burns up, burns cut and stacked grain or grain that is still grown. So, or suppose it burns the whole field. Then the one who started the fire must pay for the loss. Suppose someone gives a neighbor silver or other things to keep safe. And suppose they are stolen from the neighbor's house. The thief, if caught, must pay back twice as if twice as was stolen. But suppose the thief is not found, then the neighbor must go to the judge. They will decide whether the neighbor has stolen the other person's property. Suppose you have an ox, donkey, sheep, or clothing that does not belong to you, or you have other property lost by someone else. And suppose someone says, that belongs to me, then both people <coughs> must bring their case to the judges. The one the judges decide is guilty you must pay back twice as much to the other person. Suppose someone asks their neighbour to take care of a donkey, ox, sheep, or any other animal, and suppose the animal dies or gets hurt, or suppose it is stolen while no one is looking, then the problem will be solved by promising the law to tell the truth. Suppose the neighbour says, I didn't steal your property, then the owner must accept what the neighbour says. No payment is required. But suppose the animal really was stolen, then the neighbour must pay the owner back, or suppose it was torn to pieces by a wild animal. Then the neighbor must bring them what is left as proof. No payment is required. Suppose someone borrows from an borrows an animal from their neighbor, and it gets hurt or dies while the owner is not there. Then the borrower must will not have to pay. If the borrower hired the animal, the money paid to hire it covers the loss. Suppose a man meets a virgin who is not engaged, and he talks her into having sex with him. Then he must pay her father the price for a bride, and he must marry her. But suppose her father absolutely refuses to give her to him. Then he must still pay the price for getting married to a virgin. Do not let a woman who does evil magic stay alive, put her to death. Anyone who has sex with an animal must be put to death. Anyone who sacrifices to any god other than the Lord must be destroyed. Do not treat others outside as badly. Do not give them a hard time. Remember, you are outsiders in Egypt. Do not take advantage of widows. Do not take advantage of children whose fathers have died. If you do, they might cry out to me. I'll certainly hear them, and I'll get angry. I'll kill you with a sword. Your wives will become widows. Your children's fathers will die. Suppose you lend money to one of my people or money who is in need. Then do not treat him like a business deal. Do not charge any interest at all. Suppose your neighbor owes you money and gives you a coat as a promise to pay you back. Then return it by sunset. That coat is the only thing your neighbor owns to wear or sleep in. Then, when they cry out to me, I'll listen, because I am loving and kind. Do not speak evil things against God. Do not curse. Do not curse the rule of your people. Do not keep for yourself the grain offering, your grain offerings or wine offerings. You must give me the oldest of your sons. Do the same with your cow and sheep. Let them stay with their mothers for seven days, but give them to me on the eighth day. I want you to be my holy people, so do not eat the meat of any animal that was torn off, has been torn by a wild animal. Throw it to the dogs. Do not spread reports that are false. Do not help a guilty person by telling lies in court. Do not follow the cow when they do what is wrong. When you are a witness in court, do not turn what is right into what is wrong. Do not go along with the crowd. Do not show favour to a poor person in court. Suppose you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering away. Then be sure to return. Suppose you see that the donkey or someone who hates you has fallen down under its leg. Then do not leave it there. Be sure you help them with it. 
be kid, be fair to your poor people in their court cases. Do not have anything to do with a false charge. Do not put it to death, people not guilty of doing anything wrong. I will not let guilty people go free. Do not take money from people who want special favours. It makes you blind to the truth. It twists the words of good people. Do not treat outsiders badly. You yourselves know how it feels to be outsiders. Remember, you are outsiders in Egypt. For six years, plan your fields and gather your crops. But during the seventh year, do not follow it, plow your land or use it. Then the poor people among you can get food from it. The wild animals can eat what is left over. Do the same thing with your vineyards and your groves of wild trees. Do all your work in six days, but do not do any work on the seventh day. Then your oxen and donkeys can rest. The slaves born in your house can be renewed, and so can the outsiders who live among you. Be careful to do everything I have said to you. Do not speak the names of other gods. Do not even let them be heard on your lips. Three times a year you must celebrate a feast of my honour. Celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread. For seven days, eat bread made without yeast, just as I commanded you. Do at the appointed time in the month of Aviv. You came out of Egypt that a month. You must not come to worship me with your hands empty. Celebrate the Feast of Weeks. Bring the first share of your crops from your fields. Celebrate the Feast of Beasts. Hold it in the fall when you gather your crops from your fields. Three times a year, all your men must come to worship me. I am your Lord and King. Do not include anything made with yeast when you offer me the blood of a sacrifice. Suppose the suppose the fat from sacrifices is left over from my feast. Then do not keep it until morning. Bring the best of the first share of your crops to my house. I am the Lord your God. Do not cook a young goat and smell the smoke. I am sending an angel ahead of you. He will guide you along the way. He will bring you to the place I have prepared. Pay attention to it. Listen to what he says. Do not refuse to obey. He will not forgive you if you turn against him. He is my full authority. Listen carefully to what he says. Do everything I say. Then I will be an enemy to your enemies. I will fight against those who fight against you. My angel will go ahead of you. He will bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Parasites, Canaan, Hivites, and Jebusites. I will wipe them out. Do not do what they do. Do not bow down to their gods or worship them. You must destroy the statues of their gods. You must break their sacred stones to pieces. No share the Lord your God. Then he will bless you, bless your food and water. I, the Lord, will take away any sickness you may have. In your land, no woman will give birth to a dead baby. Every woman will be able to have children. I will give you a long life. I will send my terror ahead of you. I will throw every nation you meet into a panic. I will make all your enemies turn on their backs and run away. I will send a hornet to hurt you. They will drive out the Hittites, Canaanites, and Hittites out of your way. But I will not drive them out in one year. If I did, the land would be deserted. There would be too many wild animals for you. I will drive them out ahead of you, little by little. I will do that until there are enough of you to take control of the land. I will make your borders secure from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. They will go from the desert to the Euphrates River. I will hand over to you the people who live in the land. You will drive them out to make room for yourselves. Do not make a covenant with them or with their gods. Do not let them live in your land. If they do, they will cause you to sin against them. If you worship their gods, they will suddenly be a trap for you. The Lord said to Moses, You are... You and Aaron, Nadab and Nebuchadnezzar, and Sidney, four of the elders of Israel, must come and worship the Lord. Do you not come close when you worship. Only Moses can come to close to you. The others must not come near, and the people may not go out with him. Moses went and told the people all the word, all the Lord's words and laws. They answered with one, one voice. He said, We will do everything the Lord has told us to.